I've spent several days in the past two weeks putting my finger in holes in the dike, plugging leaks, but all of this is mere band-aids. The source of the problem is the little creek that runs down the hill under the driveway and down to the river. Now, it doesn't come down to the driveway. It goes into the ground and comes up under the slab. I called the first few of these basement flood videos quick clips because I thought they would be five or ten minute videos. They're turning into longer ones. So, back to the old timer format. Band-aids are fine for the moment, but I have to find a solution to the disappearing creek. And the solution is to build a flume to carry the water over that porous stretch of ground. Here's how much water we have coming down at the bottom. Probably about half of it at the top. Now this is more water than comes out at the bottom. Somewhere between here and the driveway, much of this water is going into the ground and coming out under the house. Most of the creek between here and the driveway is covered with blackberries, fallen trees, and brush, which I have to cut out of the way. So this is where I get to go. As I worked my way down the hill toward the driveway, there was no one place where I could say, aha, there's a lot less water here than there is five feet back up. It seemed to be disappearing more or less all along its length. What I'm going to have to do is wait until the flow at the driveway is very, very low. It will probably be tomorrow morning. I believe I earned this one. Basement started flooding eight days ago. This creek, when it was raining, was flowing. Rain stopped yesterday, and by yesterday afternoon, this was a bare trickle here at the bottom. But up above the studio, it's flowing quite well. All that water disappears into the ground, comes out under the house, and there it is running down the driveway down there. I'm going to start at the bottom this time, and we're going to go upstream to find the stream. Okay, there should be water right there. I can hear water up the hill. This is the creek bed. I see water. Water goes into this brush pile and does not come out. I was afraid of that. Under this brush pile. So this little trickle of water here makes it to here and no farther. Going to going on the ground right here at my foot. Coming out under the house. A lot more water there than there is here. It's disappearing all along this stretch right here. A lot more water right here than there is where we were Rooting around down there. So I need to know where I want to pick this water up. And I think right here. A lot less water right here than there is right there. It just keeps going over the ground. 
thinking more about this flume business. Kind of designed it in my head. I have to put it on paper because things designed in my head tend to uh, flutter away. It's uh, Tuesday the 12th. Things are beginning to dry up a little. It's not raining, so none of this is coming off the roof. All of this is from the spring under the basin. What I'm going to do is build a crude flume to carry water over this porous section. Or I'm going to need about 80 feet to see what I have in the way of material. Uh, I want to keep this as light as possible because i got to carry the damn things up the hill. So I need to start sorting out all of my one by stuff. And then that really lightweight stuff over there. The bottom of each flume section would be three quarter inch boards, the sides three eighths. Because I have limited space to stack lumber, the piles are mixed, different thicknesses. So before I can get to the one by, I have to move a lot of other stuff. Okay, here's what I got so far. These two boards are the bottom of the flume. This one is tapered so that this end will fit in the wide end of the next one down the hill. I've got these clamped tight to hold these seams as close together as possible. I'm not caulking it. I don't care if it drips. When it gets wet, it'll swell. Got this 2x2 two two under here, screw these down to that, screw down the other end, move the clamps to the middle, put one of these in the middle sides, they're pretty thin, they're going to be screwed into the sides of the bottom. I might need to countersink these. Oh, those go right in, no problem. Yes, it would have been easier to go to the basement and dig out a C-clamp, but that would mean going to the basement and digging out a C-clamp from all that stacked up stuff. Building the first flume was slow going because it was the first one. After it was finished, I left it on the saw horses and built all the remaining ones on top of it, using it as a workbench and as a template. I'd be driving screws very near the edge of the dry, thin alder, so I drilled holes and countersunk them about every seven inches, just eyeballing it to make sure I wouldn't split the wood.
There's a water's eye view, the first section of flume. This end is an inch and a quarter smaller than that end. I'll build them all the same so that this end will fit into the big end of the next one. Probably weighs under 30 pounds. This last one, I don't know. These sides are nominally 3 8 Some are 5 16 This one is 3 16 But I had this one odd board left paired with this one. So I made one. What the hell? To make any more, I need to resaw two bys to make 3 8 inch sideboards. Tomorrow I'm going to haul some of these up the mountain and see if I can get them installed. I considered figuring out how to haul these up the hill using the ATV, but the dory was parked in the way and moving it was too much trouble. The game carrier works for things other than deer. The straps were exactly the right length. I plan to start either right down there in the brush or right here at this steep drop. But this water disappears between here and where I was going to start. So, I had planned to start there and then work my way back if necessary, but it's necessary. So I will do some excavating here and start here. This will be the top one. Seems you can't make a move around here without cutting blackberries out of the way first. The creek is narrower than the flume, so I have to excavate an area big enough to put the end in and low enough to collect the water. What I'd like to do is capture this at a point where, even when this rains again and this stream builds up again, it will capture most of the water.
Now I do get the water flow into it. Well, it's probably not even half of it, but it's a start. I needed to get the flume lower in the creek bed to pick up more water. And there were rocks in the way that I could not move with my bare hands. Every time I removed one big rock, another was in the way. I used small rocks and clumps of moss to help seal the gap between the bottom of the flume and the bottom of the creek. Temporary measures for the time being. I'll have to do a lot more work up here after it rains and the creek becomes big again. And this one has to be this high to get the intake end down into the water. The next one can lie right here on the ground under. Well, when your fresh battery goes dead in 15 minutes, might be an indication it's time to buy new batteries. So you probably missed that whole operation. I do want to get one more up here today. That corner was just a little bit too tall. Well, we're getting more than half of it. Not without any improvements up there. The captain. 
put this into here. And before I put the next link in, which will not be today, I gotta drop back a bunch of these brambles. I want to cut through the corner here. I don't want to come out here and then back. So that's going to be something I can get started on right now. This seems like a good place to stop for now. This project isn't finished, unfortunately. Thanks for watching.